Hello, 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 and welcome to episode 23 of the Wool Needles Hands Knitting Podcast. My name is Taylor, and I will be your host. This is a podcast primarily about knitting, but from time to time we get up to other fibery related topics. I am coming to you from Henderson, Nevada, which is a pleasant little suburb of Las Vegas, Nevada. I am from here, and I live here with my husband, Brandon, our three-year-old son, Angus, our big fat house cat, Oscar, and soon in days, um, we're, it's could be any time now. We're expecting our next little boy, Ronan. Um, I am due on the 29th of March, but between now and then it could really be any time. And so we're kind of on pins and needles over here. It's really, really exciting. If you are a new subscriber, thank you so much for checking out the podcast. I'm sure there's something here on the Wool Needles Hands channel that you will like. And if you haven't already done so, don't forget to subscribe. That is what helps keep this channel growing. Your subscription and your thumbs up, believe it or not, are so important to help build the channel. So please don't forget to do that before you click out of the video. If you're a returning subscriber, thank you so much for coming back time and time again. Every time I post an episode, it is so lovely hanging out with you guys and having a chance to chat with you and then also carrying on the conversation in the comment section down below. Definitely don't forget to participate in the conversation down below in the comments and also head over to Ravelry because we do have a Ravelry group connected with the podcast. Just go to Ravelry, go up to the groups tab and type in Wool Needles Hands, a knitting podcast and join our Ravelry group over there. It's bustling with lots of really great people, inspiring patterns being knit, inspiring conversations, lots of cool threads. So don't forget to be a part of the Ravelry group over there. You can also find me on Instagram. I am at wool needles hands. I'm also at fiber.for.the.people. I am the owner and dyer behind Fiber for the People Yarn, which is a hand dyed yarn business that I run here from my home in Henderson, Nevada. The website for Fiber for the People Yarn is fiberforthepeopleyarn.com. You can head over to the website and see what's going on over there. There's not a whole lot in the shop right now. I am planning on having a little pop-up shop update soon, but that really is kind of pending the arrival of our new little one, so we'll see. But there is going to be a definite, really exciting big shop update coming mid-April. So don't forget to head over to the website, sign up for the newsletter. Just scroll all the way down to the very bottom. There is a place where you can subscribe to the newsletter so you can stay on top of all of the really fun things that are happening over at Fiber for the People Yarn. I also post here on the channel a show called Yarn Gab, which is just a really small, I've only got one episode so far, but it's just a really small show where I talk about what's coming to the next shop update, give you an idea of what to expect. So you can find those videos on the channel as well. I'll actually go ahead and pop up a link for you. So that way, if you'd like to check out the most recent episode of Yarn Gab, of course that yarn is not guaranteed to be in the shop, but it gives you an idea of what Yarn Gab is all about. If you'd like to get in touch, you can also email me at woolneedleshands at gmail.com. That is the email address linked to the podcast. I do have a separate email address and contact for Fiber for the People Yarn, which is the business. That is Fiber for the People contact at gmail.com. Any business related queries, any questions about orders that you may have purchased um, or orders that you may have made, please go through that email address for contact regarding Fiber for the People. Definitely don't try to get in touch with me doing direct message on Instagram. That's a really um, inconsistent way of getting in touch with me because I don't always see the messages come through and I want to be able to get back to you right away. I am now featuring on the channel a mini vlog series. You can find little episodes that are just vlogs of day-to-day -day life, things that I'm doing here um, in much less formal format than the podcast, but lots of fun content. And so those are called the WNH vlog. They have a thumbnail that has a yellow block with a title and then a photo from the blog uh, from the vlog episode. So don't forget to check those out. I will link to those right here. So if you'd like to check out the vlog playlist after you're done watching the show, you can do that. Just a little more uh, content happening here on the Wool Needles Hands podcast channel. I'm also every once in a while featuring knit tips, which are little short, tiny bits, um, no talking. It's just kind of a demonstration of a knitting tip. So you can check those out as well here on the channel. Just other little bits and pieces that make up this whole Wool Needles Hands corner of YouTube. And you can check out knit tips, the playlist for those when that link pops up over here. And that's going to take us to the show. So let's go ahead and get started for today. We 
we have a year long knit along going on over here at the Wool Needles Hands Knitting Podcast. And you guys, it is so much fun. It is so inspiring and motivating. And it's all about knitting hats. It is the Wool Needles Hands Year of Hats Knit Along 2018. The hashtag for this knit along is hashtag WNH Year of Hats KAL 2018. Use that hashtag anytime you post on social media, especially Instagram, so that we can all see the projects that you are working on for the year of hats knit along here at the wool needles hands podcast we just wrapped up february well not just we're almost about to wrap up march but since the last episode of the podcast we have wrapped up february and so i do want to announce the winner for the february portion of the knit along for february we were knitting hats for members of the opposite sex whatever that meant to you you got to choose a person in your life who was of the opposite sex and knit them a hat and i had so many submissions come through it was so fun to see all of your guys' hats that you knit and the people for whom you knit them. It's just, it's, I love that. I love getting inspiration for hat patterns via that kind of, you know, for that source, I guess you could say. Lots, lots of, lots of really good stuff. If you'd like to see um, more of the finished objects for February, don't forget to head over to Ravelry. The February finished objects thread is locked, so you can't submit your finished objects there, but you can definitely see what other people were knitting. So if you have uh, the intention of knitting a hat um, and you need an idea, then head over there head over to any of the finished object threads really because there's lots of really great inspiration in any of those threads we have january and february i guess we have two we have january and february at this point but you can check those out. We are now currently in March. We are working on baby hat knitting. So because uh, Ronin, my son, is due any day now, um, but in March, I decided to make March the month of knitting hats for babies. And it is so precious looking at the chatter thread and the finished object thread for the month of March because you guys come up with the cutest baby hats. I feel like I tend to pick very plain <laughs> baby hats, but you guys have the cutest little baby hats coming off the needles over there. It's so much fun. I'll actually show you a quick montage of some of those finished objects in just a moment, right after we announce the winner for the February portion of the Year of Hats Cal 2018 for the Wool Needles Hands podcast. Okay, the winner of the February portion of the knit along is going to receive a project bag by Tracy Utley, who is frankly on Etsy. So this is the project bag that will be coming for the prize for February. And in addition to this, they will also be receiving a little package of stitch markers um, to go with their project bag as well. Let me see if I can show you these a little bit better. So it's just a little variety of really pretty stitch markers in here with jewels and hearts that have various different messages on them. Really, really precious. And so these two items will be coming to the winner of the February portion of the Year of Hats knit along. So without further ado, the winner of the February portion of the knit along. Now there was no name attached to this, um, this handle on Instagram or on Ravelry. And so, um, I don't know your name. I would love to know your name. I like to refer to people by their first name, but in the meantime, I hope that you're watching the Ravelry handle is X A Y B E E Z. I'm not exactly her sure how that's supposed to be said. Z uh, X A B X or a b and then two x's on either side i'm not really sure um but she knit the dad's hat she knit this for her dad with stash yarn and it's gorgeous and she was randomly selected to be the winner of the february portion of the knit along so congratulations please get in touch with me um contact me at woolneedleshands at gmail.com um it's really important that you get in touch with me because with all the other things that i have going on i tend to forget to contact you to let you know that you've won and i do try my best to remember Remember to do that but in the meantime get in touch with me so everything kind of runs smoothly so congratulations um, on being the winner for the February portion of the knit along all right, let's talk about the March portion of the knit along, which is going on right now. I wanna tell you guys about the prize for this month of the knit along, and then we're gonna do a quick montage of the finished objects for March so far, and then we'll talk briefly about what's coming up in April. Um, I have some really awesome prizes here that I'm gonna share with you guys. The first was so generously donated um, by Autumn, who is Coddington Autumn on Instagram. She also has a 
blog, a craft blog that's called Coddington So Crafty. And she just, she doesn't have a project bag shop on Etsy or anything. She just likes to make them. And she generously donated a project bag to the show. And I'm so thankful. So Autumn, thank you so much for taking the time to do that and generously donating it to the show. So this is the project bag that she has donated to the podcast to use as a prize for the March or for any portion of the knit along, but I'm choosing to use it for the March portion. So here's the project bag, beautiful construction, really pretty on the inside. Um, I love the print of the fabric on the inside of the bag. It's got a really nice keychain style handle here, which could be used either as a handle or you can use it to hold stitch markers, um, whatever you should choose to do with that. There we go. So the handle is beautiful. Love, love this project bag. So this is going to be part of the prize for March. The other portion of the prize is actually a really unique prize, not something I've seen on a knitting podcast before, and I'm really proud to offer this as a prize. It is a book called The Red String, and it is by Diane Marie Prokop, and it's a book about two teenagers who kind of clash um, for various different reasons, but they do find this commonality um, in this red string. Another portion of the story kind of revolves around this red, knit hat and so she has included the book with the story of the red string in as the giveaway prize and she has also included the red hat from the story some really cool stitch markers that are um, covers of the book like these are really so cool so you can see that the stitch markers that go with this look like the cover of the book. There's that one. There's a few others right here that have different imagery from the story. And then the tag that comes with it tells about Lee's red hat hand knit by the author with therapy yarn um, by SWTC. It's 30% jadeite fiber, 50% fine wool and 20% silk. It's a beautiful texture, a really, really beautiful hat. It's kind of like a classic you know, knit beanie in a very classic color. So she's gonna be including this, which is kind of, you know, a feature from the story itself because Lee is one of the characters in the book and this is kind of a feature from the story. So these three items will be included in the prize for the month of March. So you will get the knit hat from the story, the red string, which is the story by Diane Marie Prokop, as well as the bookmark and the cute little stitch markers that look like the cover of the book. And they will also come with the beautiful project bag by Autumn, who is Coddington Autumn on Instagram. So all of those items will be the prize for the March portion of the Knit Along, which I will be announcing in the next episode of the podcast in April. Um, but I wanted to let you guys kind of in on what was going to be the prize coming for that, but really, really awesome prizes. Diane, thank you so much for this generous donation. Autumn, thank you so much for the generous donation. I'm really, really honored to be able to give these out on the podcast. Okay, without further ado, let's take a look at some of the really adorable baby hats that are being knit for the March portion of the Wool Needles Hands Year of Hats Knit Along 2018 over on the Finished Object Thread on Ravelry. Lots and lots of really adorable baby hats. I'm so excited to see all of those coming through. I can't wait to see all of the others that are submitted. It's just, it's so much fun and so inspiring. So thank you everybody who is participating in this portion and all of the portions of the knit along in, that we've had and that we will have. It's so much fun to have you guys involved in this. Um, it makes the whole thing go around. So that's what makes knit along so much fun is all of the involvement and chatter from everybody out there. So thank you guys so much. Okay, so forecasting for April. April is lace hat knitting month and we are knitting a hat that is lace. It doesn't matter what weight of yarn that you use. It's really completely up to you. The only thing I ask is that the hat is lace. The pattern is predominantly lace. You can knit it for whoever you want. It doesn't have to be an adult size hat. It can be a baby hat. 
it can be crocheted. It can, it can be done on a loom if you want. It's whatever speaks to you, be creative. Um, all comers are welcome as long as the hat is a lace hat. Um, so now is the time. The chatter thread is open on Ravelry for the April portion of the knit along. Now's the time to gather your yarn, gather your patterns, um, or even just kind of come up with some ideas for patterns, put them on the chatter thread so people can kind of share in that process with you. And you might be able to find some in inspiration over there as well. I did post um, a link to a, a search results for lace hat knitting. Um, I think that those search results were predominantly fingering weight yarn. Um, I'm not I'm not exactly sure, but that's there for you. Also, some other people have posted some ideas for lace hats that you could be knitting for April. Go over, check it out, see what it's all about. Get your ideas going. I have actually chosen the pattern that I'm going to be knitting for the lace hat, and I also have my yarn, and I actually started swatching. But for April, I am planning on knitting the squash blossom hat. This is the squash blossom hat. It is by Irina Anakiva. It is gorgeous. I love it so much. I love that it still kind of has that plant-like um, lace motif going up. I love that. I wanted to kind of do something different. The last hat that I did that was lace, it was like a leafy pattern, which I think are so beautiful, but I wanted to do something a little bit different. And I think that this is just perfect for that. Um, I have chosen my yarn. I am using a skein of Fiber for the People yarn, which is the hand dyed yarn that I dye for Fiber for the People. And I'm choosing this color. It is the clay colorway on the Twisty Singles Luxe Base. This is a 70% superwash merino, 30% silk um, fingering weight base. It is absolutely gorgeous. I love this yarn so much. And I am pairing it with a skein of mystery yarn. This is kind of a mohair. It's a fuzzy yarn. I'm not sure what the fiber content is, so I'm just calling it a fuzzy yarn. Um, but I'm pairing it with this. I'm holding these two strands together. So you'll have these two strands together to knit this hat and I'm loving it so far. And this is the swatch that I have created um, for, it's only 10 rows because I just wanted to get enough to see how the yarn would knit up together. So this is what I have so far for the swatch for the squash blossom hat. I love the yarns together. They're absolutely beautiful. They have a beautiful halo. The color is just gorgeous and I think with the lace pattern. I think it's going to give just enough stitch definition to really show it off, um, but be nice and subtle and delicate and just perfect for spring. So I'm really, really excited about that. So that is what I am going to be doing for the April portion of the knit along for lace hats. I have my swatch and my yarn living in the project bag that I'm going to be using for this project. This is a project bag by a single strand studio and I'll show it to you in just a second, but this is the business card, a single strand studio. You can find them on Etsy. They are etsy.com backslash shop backslash a single strand studio studio. You can also find them on Insta at a single strand and their project bags are awesome. So here it is. It is kind of like an origami style pyramid shaped project bag. Perfect for a sock or a hat project. And I love the fabric. You guys look at that. It's their library checkout cards. And I believe they're actual photographs of actual library checkout cards. They're adorable. So she gifted the, this project bag to me. She actually gave me a choice between two and this is the one I chose. One of them is actually going to be used for a prize for the year of Hats Cal. And I will be announcing when that will be given as a prize. But I am using this one um, for the April portion of the knit along and I love it so much. You guys need to check them out on Etsy. The project bags are gorgeous. Just look at the inside. The fabric on the inside is made up of stamps. Check out stamps. So cute. So that is where my April project is going to be stored. Definitely check out um, these project bags on Etsy from a single strand. I love them so much. <laughs> It is the perfect tea day, like cup of tea, sit down and do a podcast day. It's cloudy outside. It looks like it could rain at any moment. There's a breeze. Um, 
it's nice and cool but it's not cold it's just such a beautiful day outside I wish you could kind of see a little bit better but it's just that perfect overcast day where all of the plants look really really green and vibrant in their color everything's kind of damp because it, we, we had a really heavy rain last night so it's the perfect kind of day for a cup of tea and just relaxing so I'm really happy um, to be here with you guys podcasting chatting about knitting and having a cup of tea and I am actually drinking Perfect Peach by Bigelow. This is another one of my favorites um, by Bigelow. My ultimate favorite by Bigelow is Orange Spice, but this is another really, really soothing um, tea that I'm drinking right now. Very fruity, very floral as well. And I am drinking it in my Party Cats mug. I featured this before, I love this. It's so colorful and these cats are so much fun, but that is what I'm drinking it out of because I love this cup so much. And I love this tea so much. It is calming, it is soothing, and it's not so hot anymore because it's been sitting for a few minutes, so it's easy for me to drink right now. But that is what I'm drinking. So if you have not paused the podcast to grab your beverage, please do so so that you can have your tea or your coffee or whatever it is that you want to drink and join me for some uh, knitting and fibery goodness talk. <laughs> Boy, oh boy, do I have finished objects to share with you guys today. Um, the first one that I wanna share is my submission to the Wool Needles Hands Year of Hats Knit Along um, for March, which is baby hat knitting. Now, of course, I can't win the knit along, but this is just my, um, this is what I did for the, Mar and I actually haven't posted this on the finished object thread and I need to do that. I need to be better about that. But this is my baby hat for Ronin who will be here soon. Now this hat is actually an improvised pattern. I just kind of started knitting and then started improvising as I went. Um, and I really love the way it turned out. So this is baby Ronin's little hat. Now what happened here with mine and I didn't notice it until late and I didn't want to go back and fix it. You can see that my yarn over started here and then they kind of got shifted and they started over here, which it's really no big deal. Um, because like I said, I was improvising. I wasn't really following a pattern, but I do love the little yarn overs that kind of create this slanted, you know, lace kind of motif. Really, really cute hat. And I knit this on Fiber for the People yarn. This is the Baby Cakes base. This is 100% baby alpaca. It's a bulky weight yarn in the straw colorway. Perfect little color for um, a baby hat, in my opinion. And then I just decided to add a little gray pom-pom. I added the pom-pom in such a way that it's temporary because the hat does look really cute. Um, without a pom-pom as well. So what I just did is I uh, strung the pom-pom through the top of the hat and then I just tied it off with a little bow. So it would be easy for me to remove it if I need to. Um, but I think it looks really cute with the pom-pom on top, um, especially with the color. I think the gray and the yellow go really well together. So I'm, I'm really loving this. And the yarn is so soft, such a nice squishy yarn with a beautiful halo. It is an alpaca, so of course it is very, very soft. Um, and this actually, um, right now in the shop, I'm selling little mini skein sets of this yarn. It comes in a set of three minis in three different colors, really pretty spring colors. Um, and each mini is 30 grams, and this didn't even use an entire mini. So, I mean, one of those little sets could give you over three of these little baby hats, but it worked out really perfectly because I didn't have to use too much yarn. It knit up so quickly. So I love this. So this is just a little improvised pattern for Ronin's baby hat. I finished it a little while ago and I'm so happy with it. I think it's going to fit him just perfectly, especially in the beginning. And it does have a good stretch to it. My son Angus sees this hat in the crib, which is where I keep it. And he gets really excited about it. He sometimes will go in there um, and snatch it out of the crib and kind of just carry it around with him. <laughs> I don't know if he understands exactly what is going on with this hat. I, we talked to him about Ronin and we talked to him about the baby coming in. So I think he has an idea, but I kind of think he um, takes it out of the crib and carries it around with him. He, he has a reason for doing that and it's really it's really cute, but he always puts it back. So that's, that's really sweet. But um, I'm really excited about that. So that is my baby hat for the month of March. I also finished some other baby knitting. Now this is a project I've been working on for a little while. It was I was inspired to begin this when I received a question in one of my posts on Instagram a while ago about if I was going to be knitting any baby things because of the new baby coming on the way. 
And at the time, I didn't have anything in the works and honestly, I didn't really have any plans to knit anything, but it was this person's question and this comment that I'm very thankful for that kind of gave, that was the nip, you know, that I needed, the, the light underneath me to kind of do some baby knitting. And so I decided, um, I don't have an interest in knitting baby clothes. I, sorry, but I'm not gonna knit sweaters and knit baby garments um, for a little infant because I know what happens with the clothes that infants wear. Um, and I, I think it's adorable, I think it's really cute, but that's just not something that I'm into doing. I'm very uh, conscious about those kinds of things and I really don't want to do all of the work involved in knitting these baby clothes just to have them be something that you really have to clean in a special way um, because you are going to have to, you, you get what I'm saying. I just wasn't interested in doing that. Um, baby socks are different. I could definitely knit baby socks or maybe some baby uh, little leg warmers, something like that. I Maybe that's kind of pushing it. But when it comes to baby things that are more domestic and useful, that's right down my alley. And so I decided I was going to knit a baby blanket. That's a pretty traditional item to knit for a new little baby on the way. And so that sounded just like what I wanted to do. And so I started off knitting one pattern. Didn't get very far until I realized the pattern was just not what I was looking for. I was looking for something easy, mindless, but also had a really pretty texture to it and that would do, do the yarn justice that I had purchased for the original pattern. And I found the most perfect pattern. It is called the Summer Sidewalks Blanket by 5410 Studios. It is a pattern designed for varying different sizes of blankets, the baby blanket being the smallest. And as soon as I saw the pattern, I knew that was exactly what I wanted to knit. And I am so happy that I chose to do that because it is a beautiful blanket. I want a blanket like this. It does the yarn such justice and vice versa. I just, I love it so much, but I'm gonna go ahead and show it to you here the best that I can with the limited space. But here is, my voice might kind of go in and out a little bit since I'm covering my face, but this is the Summer Sidewalks baby blanket by 5410 studios i'm going to fold it up here so i can kind of show it a little bit better it is so ridiculously soft you guys i can't even tell you so it has this really pretty i call it ribbing and i know that's not what's happening here this is more just like a textural striping that's going on but the pattern creates these really beautiful ribbed stripes the blocks of garter stitch along the side over here it's just it's subtle and beautiful and so easy to knit. If you're looking for a blanket pattern, whether it be for a baby or for the end of your bed or for over your couch, what have you, this is such a beautiful pattern. So mindless, so easy to knit. The texture of the fabric when you're done um, has such a beautiful feel to it. You have just enough texture there to add that, you know, warmth to the blanket and make make it visually interesting and also feel really nice. And it does have a backside that doesn't have texture. So the backside of the blanket is completely flat. So when you're wearing it on your lap, um, you do have kind of a flat surface. But I, gosh, I can't say enough good things about this blanket. And I love it, especially with this yarn. I mean, look at the way the yarn drapes over my hands when I hold it up. It's like pizza dough. It just, the yarn is really beautiful. This is the Softy Baby Cotton by Bernat. And I would buy this and knit this blanket for myself in this exact same yarn. It's perfect, especially for this climate. Um, you know, we get cold in the winter, but we don't get so cold that you need a really heavy flannel blanket all the time or something made from wool. Um, a cotton blanket will definitely do the trick and this is perfect for, and it would be all year long. I mean, it's a great summer nap time blanket. Um, it's just, perfect. I love it so much. And just holding it um, in my hands right now is just so pleasant. I can't wait for baby Ronan to come and for us to wrap him in this because it's just so soft. So that is the Summer Sidewalks Blanket by 5410 Studios. And you guys, I cannot recommend this pattern to you more. And the yarn as well. It's a budget yarn. You can get it at Joann's. You can get it at Michael's. I, you know, I take that back. I don't know if you can find it at Michael's, but I know you can find it at Joann's. It's really inexpensive. This took, I'm not kidding, three balls of this yarn, which I mean, I know it's a baby blanket, but that's great. Like that's very affordable. Um, you don't have to worry about buying tons and tons of it. I have so much left because the pattern I was going to be knitting previously 
um, required much more yarn. So I don't know, you guys, this is just a great pattern all around. So I'm really, really happy um, to have this off the needles and I have it, I'm keeping it in the crib right now. It just lays in the crib with the baby hat and I'm so happy with it. So if you watch the episode of the vlog, which is vlog episode number two, you'll I talk about blocking this. I steamed it. I had the iron right on top of it because it's cotton and it worked beautifully. It did not shrink in the dryer um, and it just blocked so beautifully with the iron. I couldn't be happier. So yeah, definitely check out that episode of the vlog because like I said, I go into much more detail about that, but that was how I blocked this and it worked perfectly. Another thing I did with this, when I cast it off the blanket, I wanted to be sure that I didn't cast off in the traditional way, giving me a tight kind of bind off edge. I wanted it to be stretchy enough that it didn't affect the overall shape of the blanket, if you know what I mean. And so I did the Jenny's surprisingly stretchy bind off um, when I did my bind off at the end and I um, but this is the bind off edge here I'm actually just gonna show you what the bind off edge looks like you can see it's a really nice and neat edge and it doesn't pull in there's no pulling in happening it's perfect it keeps everything nice and square so you don't have that weird like shape that happens when you bind off traditionally so I would definitely recommend doing that as well so I did that with the edging of this blanket and it worked beautifully. So that is my Summer Sidewalks Blanket by 5410 Studio. Check out episode two of the vlog. I talk more about it there. Um, love it. If you're looking for a blanket pattern, you want something easy, this look no further because this is perfect and it's adaptable. You can have multiple sizes. I think she even has one that would fit on a regular size bed. It's just perfect. Um, all of the patterns I've seen over there at 54 and 10 Studios are gorgeous. Very minimalist, and that's what I love in patterns like this. So it's right down my alley. So definitely check it out, but I'm super excited to have this off the needles. Before you know it, you will see a picture or you will see a video of little Ronan wrapped in this blanket and I can't wait for that day to come. <laughs> okay, my next pair of socks is another vanilla sock, but this, what's special about this is this is my very first toe up sock. I, um, in my most recent shop update, I put some round the way in the shop, which is a really beautiful purple based speckled colorway. I'll pop a photo up here so you can see what it looks like. Um, I could not resist snagging a skein of that off the shelf in the lofty DK base to knit a pair of DK shorties um, because I love this colorway so much. It is just such a fun colorway. I love the speckles and I'm really, really happy that I decided to knit these because I love these. Okay, so I did these toe up. That was new for me. I had never done a toe up sock before and I thought this would be a great opportunity for me to give it a shot. And so I casted these on and it was amazing how fast I kind of worked my way through. And I knit them, I started off knitting them um, two at a time. So I did my toe first for each. Then I threw both of them on a long um, circular needle and knit them two at a time. And then I started remembering how much I hate knitting socks two at a time took them off and then I just started knitting them concurrently. So I was still working on them kind of, uh, not two at a time, but I would work on a little of some, get myself to kind of like a mile marker and then go work on the other. And then they both popped off the needles at relatively the same time. So really happy about that. Um, definitely gonna do that with my next pair of socks uh, because it just makes sock knitting so much easier because you don't have to worry about second sock syndrome and all of that. Um, but yeah, these were a, a lot of fun to knit. Now. I'm not sure I love knitting socks toe up. I'm not sure I love the way they look, but I'm really happy that I learned the technique. So here is my toe up vanilla shorty sock using round the way. Um, and I do have two of them. It is a pair and I love them. And of course I couldn't help but add a little pop of pink at the top because I had this like cheapy pink acrylic yarn that I was gonna use for some pom-poms in my stash and I saw it and it went so perfectly with this color that I threw in a little contrasting bind off edge at the top of the sock for good measure and I'm really happy that I did. It's, it's really fun, it plays with the main color really nicely. Ugh, so cool. It almost has kind of like an I-cord look to it because it's just the bind off edge and when you knit socks toe up, the top of the cuff becomes your bind off edge and that always kind of has like a little bit of a thickness to it. Plus this is a worsted weight yarn, this is a DK weight yarn, so there was that difference in weight there as well. But I really love these. Um, here's my toe 
So like I said, these are a toe up sock. I don't know how well I did. I mean, I feel like the increases look pretty nice um, here. I like the way they look here. But one thing that I don't like is the heel. So this is just a short row heel. I feel like a short row heel gives really ugly holes right here in the corners. And then the way that I did the short row heel, I think there's just lots of holes happening kind of in here. It's not very tight. I'm not sure if I did something wrong or what, but I'm not a huge fan of this type of heel. Fish Lips Kiss heels, they are easy to knit and super fast, but I'm not a big fan of the way that they look. And I'm not, you know, especially fond of how they fit on my heel. I'm a heel flapping gusset gal all the way, but, but that's no big deal because I just love knowing that I learned a new technique to knit socks to say that I know how to knit socks toe up to have learned um, the cast on method for knitting a toe up sock, which is uh, Debbie's magic cast on, I believe. Um, I thought that was amazing. And as I was doing it, I was thinking of other applications that you could use that in. And I know that that kind of a cast on where you cast on your stitches for your toe and you have like no virtually no seam actually you have no seam um it's it pretty much gives the effect if you're not familiar with it it gives the effect of a kitchener stitch um but as a cast on and so it's it's really pretty amazing so i loved learning that um part of this type of sock that was really cool but i wasn't too fond of how the heel turned out but what can you do I'm happy with the socks. I think they're beautiful. I've worn them a lot since I finished them. They uh, keep their shape really well. They're super, super warm. I actually need to wash them as well just because when you wear them, you need to wash them. I feel like I get a good two or three wears out of these socks before I feel compelled to wash them. But yeah, so these are off my needles. Another pair of shorty vanilla socks, which kind of are my jam right now. Easy instant gratification. Um, knit with DK yarn makes it go so fast. Love that. Um, the next pair of socks I have have kind of been in the works for a while. These are my family work socks. I knit a pair of these previously uh, a few months back in a traditional sock, kind of that sock monkey uh, color pattern. I'll pop a picture up here so you can see those. And I wanted to cast on another pair of pretty much immediately after I finished those. And so I did, but they've just kind of been languishing for the longest time. And I finally decided to finish them because I really wanted to have them. The only difference is, is I knit these smaller than the previous pair because I wanted something that fit a little bit more snugly. And these definitely do. So this is my Family Work Socks by Yarnspirations. Um, just a really easy, great pattern. They um, are, you know, designed after the traditional work sock pattern with the stripe and the contrasting heels, cuffs, and toes. These are knit on a worsted weight Patton's Classic Wool um, yarn. In, and I'm not exactly sure what all the colorways. I believe this is gray, this is navy, and then I think that this is called Erin. Um, but you can find this yarn at Joann's as well. But I love it. I love the sweatery feel of these socks. I actually posted a picture on Instagram just recently with me wearing them. Um, and they fit my feet just like a sweater and it like a nice snug fitting sweater and it's perfect. I call socks like this feet sweaters. They're not quite slippers. They're not quite regular traditional socks. They're feet sweaters. So I really love them. If you're looking for a really good worsted weight sock pattern, definitely check out the family work socks. Super easy. Um, a lot of fun to knit. I actually didn't knit the leg as long as the pattern called for. It calls for an 11 inch leg. I only did a seven inch leg just cause I wanted to get them off the needles and I didn't feel like I needed an 11 inch leg. And so I kind of adjusted the pattern in that way. Um, but I really, really love them. So these are the Family Work Socks by Yarnspirations. They are off my needles and on my feet sometimes because they're so cozy. I love them. They, uh, they hold their shape really well too. Sometimes I think that worsted weight socks are gonna kind of stretch out and lose their shape, but these guys hold their shape really well. And I credit that to this yarn. I love Patton's Classic Wool. It is a hardy, rustic, 100% wool, non-superwash yarn. And so it kind of just really holds its shape nicely. It doesn't stretch out. So definitely a really great yarn for knitting a good pair of worsted weight socks. So those are my finished objects, but I do have some fun things on the needle. So let's go ahead and move to my works in progress. So 
So I have several works in progress going right now, but I'm only going to share with you three of them just because it saves time um, and I'm not working on all of them as actively as the others. So I have three that I've chosen that I want to share with you guys today. Um, and the first one is my really late submission to the February portion of the Wool Needles Hands Year of Hats Cal um, 2018. This is my February hat that I am knitting for my husband. I kind of put this off to the side because I had decided um, a week, about a week and a half ago that I was really gonna put um, non-essential projects off to the side so that I could finish my baby hat and my baby blanket because I wanted to get those done obviously before Ronan arrived. And I'm really happy that I did that because I got them finished. And so I have picked this hat back up and I'm loving working on this. So this is um, a hat that I'm kind of, I say I'm improvising in the sense that I don't have a pattern to go along with this, but I am using a pretty well-known stitch pattern. This is the bamboo stitch. So here is um, the hat so far. I don't have a whole lot done, but quite honestly, I don't really have a whole lot to go based on how long or tall I want the hat to be. So this is just kind of a basic um, one by one rib brim with the bamboo stitch portion of the hat here. So you can see um, the bamboo stitch there. It's a really, really cool stitch. I've never knit anything with the bamboo stitch before. And my purpose for choosing this was because I wanted a stitch pattern that was a little bit more masculine. And when I did kind of a search of stitch patterns, um, I, I actually think I typed into Google masculine stitch patterns and this came back as being the number one masculine stitch pattern. And I don't know what makes a stitch pattern masculine or feminine, but I definitely see how this could be a very, you know, masculine texture for a hat. And my husband is a very manly man. And if I am going to knit him a textured beanie, I know that he's probably going to want it to be something more manly. And so this kind of suited him perfectly. So I'm really, really enjoying the texture of the hat. This is also knit in my um, Fiber for the People yarn in the baby cake space. This is 100% baby alpaca bulky yarn. This is on the Going Out Jeans colorway. This is one of my dyed to order colorways in the shop. So you can actually have this colorway dyed to order on any of the bases in the shop right now. I love this. It's a great classic, you know, navy color. But he loved it. I love it. I think it's a really beautiful colorway on this yarn and in this hat. Um... And it's so soft, just like the baby hat, it's so soft. The texture that this stitch pattern creates is nice and sturdy. So, so it feels a little less flimsy than the texture created or the fabric created in the baby hat, which is good for this because I want the hat to ha kind of hold a little bit more shape. Um, he didn't want something really slouchy. He wanted something that was a good um, solid beanie for him. And so I feel like the texture of this stitch pattern is really going to hold the shape nicely. So that is my February hat for my husband. No pattern is attached to this. Just like I said, one by one rib brim and then a bamboo stitch hat portion here and then I'm going to I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to decrease for the crown yet I do have a couple of ideas um, a couple of viewers actually got in touch with me after I talked about this on previous episodes of the podcast with some ideas of how I could decrease this hat for the crown so I might use some of those suggestions as well. If you have any other suggestions, you can let me know. But I'm almost to that point. I think I have about an inch and a half left, and then I'm going to start decreasing for the crown. But I love it. Um, it's not the fastest pattern to knit, um, stitch pattern to knit. It does kind of take, there is, a, you know, an element to the stitch pattern that slows you down a little bit, but it's nothing to write home about. It doesn't slow you down so much that it makes it tedious. Um, so, yeah, I really love it. So my February hat for Brandon coming down the pipe. Okay, so the next thing I want to share with you guys is my granny stripe blanket. I haven't made a ton of progress since I showed this last time, but I've made some and I want to show it because I feel like anytime I show this, it's like a little dose of color therapy. It's so much fun. Anytime I share it, it's color therapy for myself. Hopefully it's a little bit of color therapy for you. And I, you know, I love on Instagram um, scrolling through everybody's awesome like Instagram feeds. But whenever I see a granny stripe blanket, you know, scroll through my feed, I get so excited. Um, I love posts with granny stripe blankets because they're always so beautiful and colorful. So that's what I want to share with you guys. So I am... Oh, and another reason why I'm really excited to share this with you guys is I have woven in all of my little eyelash ends that were sticking out. And I am now crocheting this from a magic cake that I created so that I don't have to worry about little random yarn ends creating a nightmare in my blanket. Because if you did watch the last 
episode of the podcast and I showed you what I had of my granny stripe, you saw all the little tiny ends sticking out and it was kind of distracting. Well, it was distracting for me at least, um, but they are all woven in and I feel so good about it because when I pull this out, I'm not pulling out just like a hairy mess. Um, so they're all woven in, everything looks nice and clean, and I have a nice clean uh, magic cake over here that I'm crocheting from. So I'm really excited about that. I'm proud of myself that I finally did that. And whoever suggested, um, I can't remember who originally suggested um, doing the magic knot uh, or making a magic cake. Thank you so much. I had heard about these uh, you know, techniques before, but it was before I was crocheting and so it didn't really apply. Um, but now that I'm working on a crochet project, it's beautiful. And the knots don't bother me at all. I know some people were saying that they choose not to do that because of the knot. And quite frankly, it does not bother me one bit. I could see how it could bother some and, and in certain projects, definitely I wouldn't do that. But for this, forget about it. I think it's perfect. So here is my granny stripe so far with no ends hanging out. Um, and I love it. I am now working on uh, this. This is what I've most recently done here. And I'm using minis that I have in my collection, just a bunch of random minis that I've pulled. So I have uh, Fiber for the People is this green kind of emerald color here. I'm not exactly sure where this mini came from. The, most of the minis that I have in my collection are not labeled. Um, they were gifted to me. Um, I acquired them in various different places. This, however, this orange color at the top, this is Peach Pit by Fiber for the People. Beautiful colorway. Um, I love the way it kind of goes with this berry color right here. Really pretty. Um, this is the jade colorway. Love that. I think the three of those together are really fun together. But one thing that's happening now, because previously I was using a row one pack of little teeny tiny minis, and the mini skeins were so small that they wouldn't quite make an entire, you know, row the length of the blanket. And so I have these staggering color changes that you can see here, I think. Maybe you might be able to see it, you might not. Um, I can look on this side, but the color changes kind of stagger across the blanket because I don't make a complete, you know, length of the blanket with any of the minis. But now, with what I'm working on, the mini skeins that I'm using are long enough or large enough um, that they make full rotations or that they can go the full length of the blanket several times. So I'm gonna have larger blocks of color, which is fine. I think that that'll look really, really pretty. So that's kind of what I'm doing right now. I have this orange colorway, which like I said, is the peach pit colorway. And I believe there's a good amount left to go in there. So I'll probably be able to finish up another length of the blanket before the color changes again. But I'm loving this. I love this, it's therapeutic. The texture is really nice in my hands, the, the feel of the yarn, the texture of the, the stitch pattern, it's just really great. It's just one of those, you know, considering where I'm at right now in my pregnancy, which is nine months pregnant, um, it's something I look forward to working on. It, it's comforting, it's calming, it's like comfort food for like knitting or crochet. It's crochet's version of mashed potatoes, in my opinion, but I don't know. I love it. And um, I feel like if I were to recommend to anybody who has yet to cr try crochet and wants to do a crocheted granny stripe blanket, my recommendation would be just teach yourself how to crochet a granny stripe blanket. Start there. Don't start from the ground up and then work to a granny stripe. Just teach yourself how to do the granny stripe. And then it's amazing how all of the other pieces kind of fall into place. So I'm really happy that I chose to just go that route and kind of get started um, because I love doing this. It's such a great therapy project in my opinion. So that is my granny stripe. Highly recommend you try one if you haven't done it yet. Hi! It was a what? It was two. Yeah, that's good. Are you having a fun time? Yeah. Did you have a good nap? Yeah. Okay, you can show me. You want to show me your puzzle? <gasps> Did you put that together with all by yourself? Yeah. Did you and Daddy do it? Yeah. Oh, it's beautiful. Should we show everybody? Is that what you did? That's a really beautiful puzzle. Hi. Say hi. hi. Say my name is Angus. That's my Angus. <laughs> and this is your puzzle. Say, I just did a puzzle. I did a puzzle. Oh, baby, that's so good. I'm so proud of you. Bye-bye.
I love you. So we had a little interlude with my son right there. <laughs> um, so back to the granny stripe blanket. If you have yet to try crocheting a granny stripe, definitely give it a shot. It is so worth it. I love it so much. Um, and it's kind of fun because it's a no pressure project. You know it's going to take you some time so you don't feel compelled to work on it, you know, feverishly trying to get it done quickly. Um, it's just there. It's there for you when you need it. My last work in progress that I'm going to share with you guys today is new. Um, I'm really excited to share these with you guys. I've been eyeballing them for a little while now and I finally decided to just bite the bullet and purchase them. I haven't bought um, new yarn or a new kit since I purchased my Brooklyn Tweed yarn for a sweater that I'm working on, which is kind of on hold right now. Um, so I decided I would treat myself to a new kit. And so I purchased from Wool and the Gang a kit of Kinda Magic socks. So here are the Kinda Magic socks by Wool and the Gang. They are a self-patterning um, sock and it's using Regia yarn. So Wool and the Gang collaborated with Regia yarn who's known for their self-patterning and self-striping socks. Plus they have really great sock yarn and they designed these kind of magic socks that create this really fun leopard print sock. And I saw it and as soon as I saw, I think I saw this for the first time on Pinterest actually. Um, I just love, I thought it looked so cool. Such a fun, you know, diverting knit um, that would keep you interested and probably have these socks flying off the needles. And I'm really happy that I did. I actually ordered the kit and it came with three of the different balls of yarn and the pattern. And it came with this colorway right here, which you see, which I'm gonna show you in a second. It came with a really pretty blue colorway, which I'll pop up here. And then it also came with a fun gray, yellow, um, kind of a neutral, you know, if, if I, it's just a very like subtle palette with oranges and yellows and grays. So the gray color palette and the one I'm about to show you now, I kept for myself and the blue color palette actually is being sent to a really dear friend for her birthday. Um, but I'm really excited about these socks. Now, before I share these with you, um, I will acknowledge the fact that there have been mixed reviews on these socks. People have been wary about trying them because they do only come they don't have size options. Um, you kind of have to get the proper gauge that the pattern calls for to create the pattern, to have it work out the right way. And I think that people, that's been kind of like a stressful notion um, when it comes to working these socks. And then again, like I said, they don't come in various different sizes. They're kind of a one size fits most sock. And actually, when you look at the picture of the sock, we can tell that the model wearing the sock, the sock fits a little bit more loosely on this particular person, which for me, that's ideal. I don't like my socks to fit too tightly. I like them to fit um, more like sweaters for your feet because I just wear them around the house. I don't wear them with shoes. So there's just, you know, they're just comfy, you know, accessories that I like to wear. So that's, that's perfect for me, but I know some people prefer their socks uh, to be worn with shoes and maybe this would be um, not ideal because you're not really guaranteed to get that fit. But, all that being said, I'm really, really happy with these socks. So let me go ahead and show you what I have so far. Okay, so here is the ball of yarn. Um, the yellow yarn that you're seeing is not part of the pattern. That's actually there for you for waist yarn. And this yellow strand will be for my second sock. I already used the first sock's yellow waist yarn strand, but this one is there being held for you for the second sock. Um, but it's a really beautiful sock yarn. It's a 75-25 um, superwash wool nylon blend fingering weight yarn. And it's a really nice, gorgeous, rustic yarn. You kind of feel like you're going to get a really good quality hardy sock with this sock yarn. Um, it's beautiful. So here is what I have so far. Oh my gosh, you guys, I'm loving these so much. These start, well, I started with the smallest needle size recommended in the pattern. So they recommend three needle sizes to have kind of on hand when you're working on this. And actually when you order the kit, you have an option to have the needles sent to you. Um, they're sent to you as DPNs. They send you a size one, a US one, a US one and a half and a US two. Um, because you're going to do some adjustments based on how the pattern works out for you. So I'll clarify what that means in just a second. Um, the pattern has these little sections of stripes right here. When you get to that section, the directions in the pattern are gonna ask you to kind of pay attention and make sure that you complete a rotation or one round 
with one color. So that means that one stripe should make it all the way around exactly. And if you go over, then you adjust your needle size. If you're under, you adjust your needle size. So you kind of use the striping section here as your gauge for what you sh which needle you should be using for the rest of your pattern so that this portion of the pattern works out correctly. I thought that was really cool because you don't have to worry so much about a, your gauge swatch working out a certain way because that, you know, your gauge might change a little bit, your tension might change a little bit. Um, it kind of gives you that gauge swatch, you know, experience within the pattern itself. So I really appreciated that um, aspect of this pattern. I actually am knitting these on a size two, which is really unusual for me with sock yarn. I usually knit socks on a size one. But it just worked out that way and and honestly i feel like a size one and a half would have been ideal for me um, but i didn't have a one and a half and the two was pretty much spot on so i just went with the two so my stitches don't look as like tight as they typically do when i knit socks and if i stretch it out you can see that there's you know it's, it's a little bit of a looser knit fabric but that's okay i i love it regardless and like i said i like my socks to fit a little bit more loosely um, but I'm thinking that my stitch, kind of my stitch definition would be even better if I had chosen to do this on a size one and a half. So I went ahead and ordered a size one and a half Chiagu circular needle to do my next pair of these, because as soon as I'm finished with these, I'm casting on the other pair because I love them so much. Um, and I'm really excited to see kind of how the pattern works out with a size one and a half. So you can see the leopard print here. One thing they mention about that, they say that if your leopard prints are leaning a particular way, that means you're knitting either too loosely or too tightly. And you can see that mine kind of lean a little bit. Um, but I was looking at the picture and the picture, which it's not super easy to see right here, but you can see on the picture up here that these lean as well. So. I mean, nobody's gonna have that perfect tension that was used to manufacture the yarn. And I'm totally okay with that. I guess I just don't feel like I'm that much of a stickler for having the, the print be perfect. I'm okay with a little bit of a variation because if, if I'm knitting too loosely um, for the pattern, but yet yeah, I'm using the proper needle size, I'm not gonna force myself to knit tightly because then that can become awkward. And it's also really not good for your hands to force yourself to knit a certain way because that can create a lot of strain. And so I didn't worry about it because I really loved the way that they were coming out and I didn't feel like that was an issue. Plus, when you look at it, it really doesn't look like, it looks like leopard print. It looks the way that it's supposed to look. So I'm, I'm really happy with that. So another thing that I really love about this as well is that it's going to be using a, a kind of like a picked up stitch heel happening here. So this is my waist yarn that I used right here. Um, this, the two ends of the waist yarn are actually inside the sock, um, but that is going to be pulled out. I'm going to pick up some stitches on either side to create my, it's kind of like an afterthought heel, I guess you could say, and I've never done that before. So I'm excited to try that technique. Um, so that's really cool. But the one thing I did notice, and it's probably a mistake on my part, even though I followed the pattern, is that um, you do knit this portion of the pattern until you get to the solid color that's going to be used for your heel, which is right here. And then you kind of hold this off as a separate ball and I just kind of stuff it in here as I'm working. Um, but in order for me to complete a full round, I had to knit a little bit of that solid color. So I have this like random stripe happening right there. And I really don't think that's a big deal. I was not, I was certainly not going to go back and try to figure out how to avoid doing that. I just figured, you know what, whatever, it's fine. It's not going to interfere with the, the actual construction of the sock. I really don't think that it takes away from the actual pattern. So, you know, something like that might happen when you're working on these, but I don't think that that's a deal breaker at all. I have had so much fun knitting these and they fly. I mean, I'm almost... I'm almost finished with, you know, the rest of the foot and I'm almost at the toe. And then I throw the heel in and then I'm finished and I just started these, um, not last night, but the night before. So I'm super, super happy with this. So I definitely recommend giving it a shot if you've seen it, if you've kind of had an interest in it because it's a lot of fun. There are no progress keepers on this project just because I feel like I don't need them. Um, I don't need that extra motivation just because the pattern kind of does that for me. Um, love it. So yeah, these are the Kind of Magic socks by Wool and the Gang using Regia yarn. 
and I am so excited. I'm going to have these guys finished. I want to have them finished tonight because I would like to see how they turn out. At least have to the toe finished, and then I'll probably do the heel tomorrow because that's a new thing, and I've never done that kind of a heel before, so I want to be able to be able to relax into that technique a little bit. So I definitely recommend having the three various different sizes of needles on hand because you are gonna make some adjustments um, as you go in the pattern. And I now have my one and a half, so I'm really excited to start the next pair of these once these are finished and to kind of see where my gauge takes me there. Um, I do, you have that kind of gauge section in the beginning with this stripe part here. And then when you get down towards the toe, before you start decreasing for the toe, you have another stripe section as well that's going to serve as another place to determine your gauge. So you do that twice. And then of course you kind of pay attention to the pattern as you go to determine whether or not um, your gauge is working out. But I really wouldn't worry so much about that. If your gauge works out up here, um, you're gonna be fine. I And I, I wouldn't, I mean, I kind of think that that's just the way I am about this. I'm not so, uh, so much of a stickler for that. I think it's enjoyable to knit. I'm loving the way the pattern looks. I think they're beautiful. And so I just go with it. I'm, I'm not worried about it. So I would recommend being the same way about it. Um, just so they're not, it's not a stressful project because you don't want it to be that at all. And it hasn't been that for me at all. I, I've had so much fun knitting these. So, so yeah, so these are the kind of magic socks by Wool and the Gang. Definitely recommend it if you've thought about wanting to try it. Um, just do it. I mean, the price is really great, quite honestly. Get yourself the set of, of three and you have some various different ones to try. It's such a cute, you know, pair of socks to have in your collection. So I'm loving these so far. So those are my works in progress that I'm going to share with you guys today. I have a few others that I'm working on right now, but I think that I'm going to just stick to the three in episode because it keeps the time of the episode down a little bit. Plus those are the three most important to me at the moment. Right, so let's go ahead and move on. All right, you guys, that is all I have time for today. Thank you so much for stopping by to check out the podcast. I wanna take a minute to remind you guys of the local yarn store call to action. It is a call to action that we have here on the podcast where I ask you, the viewers, to go out into the wild, into your community, to your local yarn store, get some footage, much like what you're gonna see at the end of the video here. I add the music um, and I do all of the patching together. All you have to do is take simple video, send it to me here at the podcast at woolneedleshands at gmail.com come with the information about the yarn store, any information that I can provide here on the podcast. It's just another way to broaden our perspective of this community that we're a part of so we, in all different places and from all of the different necks of the woods of the various different viewers. So, so definitely participate in that. I really would like to continue to share these really awesome local yarn shops at the end of the podcast. All right, guys, thank you so much for joining me on episode 23 of the Wool Needles Hands Knitting Podcast. Next time you see me, I will have a new little one to share with you guys. Baby Ronan will be here. I'm so excited about that. I apologize if this episode was a little bit patchy. I feel like my brain is a little bit all over the place right now because these are the last days of the pregnancy, but I'm super excited and I love being able to share it with you guys here in the wool, at the Wool Needles Hands podcast with our little Wool Needles Hands family here. So it, it means a lot to me to be able to do that. But again, thank you so much for stopping by to check out the podcast. I will see you guys soon for episode 24. Don't forget to check out the vlog episodes that I've recently uploaded. More of those will be coming between now and the next episode of the podcast so you can keep your eye tuned to the channel for those things. Don't forget to subscribe, give the episode a thumbs up if you like what you see here to help this continue to grow. It means so much to me. All right guys, until next time, happy knitting, happy whatever it is that you're doing. I will see you soon. Bye.